Greetings everyone. Um, I'm going to do this uh, correction as a video correction as well. Um, I think this lends more to the process so that people can get a better understanding of how we do these things. Um, so uh, there have been a couple of solutions already put out on the forum for this and my correction is by far not the definitive answer. There's a couple of wonderful corrections out there so far which is just great. Um, the way I would tackle this type of image though is um, because there's such a strong contrast between the bright highlights here and in these areas, they are almost specular highlights. I mean if we zoom into the image here you can see that, that while they're fairly bright areas there's a lot of detail in the image so they're not quite blown out so I do want to try and do everything I can to uh, save those areas of the image but I also want to increase the contrast and bring up some of the detail down in these shadow areas here um, as I look at this image though I also notice that there's certainly a great deal of um, uh, detail and texture in the rocks so when I do all of these moves I want to make sure that I still maintain um, control of those areas as well. So I'm going to zoom back out here and the first thing I'm going to try on this because I know that the screen uh, the layer mode screen um, affects the darkest areas of the layer more than any other part of the image I'm going to make a layer copy here and I'm going to set the mode to screen. Now that makes an immediate improvement but it does um, blow out those areas. If I turn this uh, layer off you can see there's a lot more detail there. I'm starting to lose it. So I know at this point in order to save the image where I want it I'm going to need to create a mask. But before I do I think there's more here. So I'm going to take this layer that is a screen layer and I'm going to copy it again. And that's more where I want this image to be because as I build my mask now I'm going to take care of these areas here and um, try and maintain this foreground correction and still hold up on the background. So the first thing I want to do is I want to flatten all of the layers and the way I do that is I turn off the background by clicking on the eyeball and then I'm just going to keystroke control shift E and that will flatten the non flatten all the visible layers. I'm going to turn the background layer back on because I need it now to go create my mask in Curvemeister. So I'm going to start the Curvemeister program and I'm going to choose my mask palette again and I know it seems like we're using masks a lot. Um, we can do a lot of this stuff with um, without a mask but these tend to look nicer when we use a mask. Um, I'm going to use the L channel from lab as my mask and I'm going to switch to the mask tab here and the first thing I'm going to do is I want to protect the water in bright areas so I'm going to invert this mask and I click on the outside edge and you see the double headed arrow and I just turn it over so that only the brightest highlights are black and then I'm going to adjust this down until I feel that I have the mask I want and that looks pretty good because I really want to save these areas up in the top and I may even actually paint on this mask later we'll see but the first thing I'm going to do now is copy it and then I'm going to cancel out of Curvemeister. I'm going to switch my background copy to layer and I'm going to add a mask. Alt click to activate it, paste it with control V and then I'm going to blur this mask. I want a Gaussian blur on this mask of about 30 or so pixels. And the reason for that is um, it takes away, it helps blend the edges over so that um, our changes don't look so abrupt or almost like sketched or outlined. So I'm going to click OK there and we'll click back over. And as I look at this now I can see that there isn't enough contrast in these areas. I'm going to try something here. I'm going to take this whole layer and duplicate it. Mm, that's looking a little bit better. I'm thinking I'm going to do that and I'm just going to flatten this whole image from here. Okay, um, all of that was really preparatory work so that we can go in and use Curvemeister to finish this off. Um, and again I'm going to use uh, the lab color space because as Lonnie pointed out it's 
it seems to lend itself well to these types of corrections but I'm gonna do this a little bit differently um, I'm gonna use a kind of a color expansion technique on this and see where we get first thing I'm gonna do is check my threshold I'm gonna try and get as much as I can and I'm just pulling in the edge until I start to see those little specular highlights pop through in the water and I'm gonna check my shadow and it's pretty good but I do want to have more open feel to this so I'm going to put a little more contrast in here just by introducing a little teeny bit of an S curve just to make the image appear a little crisper a little bit more sharp um, so now the next step in this is there's I've got to find um, an area that I want to have stay the same color so in general when I talk about this I usually am looking for a neutral now we haven't really set a neutral on this image but really this area of the water is pretty neutral all by itself so I'm gonna choose that and make that kind of my anchor point all of my corrections from now on are gonna be based on returning this to this negative one and two for color because we're done with luminosity right right now I'm just gonna strictly focus on color and there's two axes of color here in the lab channel there's the red green axis and there's the yellow blue axis I'm going to take a quick look at the yellow blues I don't think they need a lot of adjustment um, I might just make them pop a little bit here um, I'm gonna select a, a point that I know should be yellow the flowers on this bush and I'm gonna set a contrast pin now uh, let's look at the B channel only and what setting a contrast pin does is it creates two pins on the grid and the area in between is where we're going to be able to adjust now if I take this cursor and I put it on the edge of the frame it turns into a double headed arrow and I can rotate those two points and as you can see now the yellows are more prominent than they were before but I've also messed up the B channel a little bit so I'm going to use again with those two points linked my arrow keys on my keyboard to push this curve back down to where that originally was so now I have not changed the color but I have expanded the yellow range out in that bush and that's about as far as I'm gonna go with it that's a pretty small adjustment let's take a look for something in the reds now the first thing you notice is because I set that contrast point there's already points set on my a channel curve I'm gonna right click here choose edit and reset and it will reset only the a channel curve now I'm gonna try and find some red in the image some areas where I think that the red needs to be enhanced and split up a little bit more and some of these areas can be quite dark especially with the rocks the way they are um, we're going to be working very close to the center of the A channel here and I'm going to expand this out so that we can see it a little bit more I think I'm going to go right there and I'm going to set a contrast pin now you'll notice it set the same pin on this channel before I screw this up I'm going to take those pins off and I'm going to come back to my A channel I know it's a lot of monking around and I'm sorry um, it'll get easier as you get into the course a little bit more um, but for now just know that that once you get comfortable with this you can work rather quickly and I'm going to expand those reds and greens now you'll notice that the greens up in the bushes almost look unrealistic and I'm gonna push I'm gonna push the color back down where it belongs first and and there we have a much better place for the greens but I still feel that they're a little too over adjusted so I'm gonna flatten the top half of that curve out and that will hold the um, the greens in check while we adjust some of the reds here okay so we've expanded the red we've expanded the yellow blue the waterfall itself did not really change color at least in the spot that we set up as neutral let's take a look at where we started this is where the image started when we came in this is where I've taken it to with my corrections so I'm going to apply this and we're going to come back out here and do some quick looking just to see if we've made any damage here we still appear to have great detail in the image and as you can see now you can see a lot more detail in the shadows and the reds 
certainly are more differentiated throughout the entire image. And that actually looks pretty good. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed the correction. Uh, please post questions and uh, and post your images out to the forum. Um, I hope you had fun with this image and I hope to see you soon.